Well, hello there. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. And today we're going to go on a little journey and flip this buffet that's hanging out behind me. It's a custom order for a really colorful client. So I hope that you stay tuned and stay interested because it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's talk about what we're going to do to this little piece. First of all, totally not little. It's actually a really big piece. It's like six and a half feet long. It's a beautiful buffet that has a couple drawers that open up in the middle. It also has some really cute little marble slabs that sit flush on the top. I haven't brought those in yet. Those will be the last because I'm always afraid of breaking everything. So plan for this piece today is to number one, paint it beautiful with Dixie Belle paint products. Number two, make it colorful because this is for a custom order for a client that is very colorful and she has a really great request. So we're going to mix some paint, make a custom color and paint it. Let's talk about proper prep. Whenever I'm painting any piece of furniture, it always gets cleaned with white lightning. White lightning is a powder-based cleaner that I disperse into a spray mixing bottle filled with water and wash my piece very well, inside and out. I then rinse it with water to make sure that all of the cleaning agent has been removed. I also gave this piece a slight scuff sand just to remove some of the manufactured shine that was on top. After I've completed my scuff sand on the piece, I wipe it down with a cloth. Okay, so after you've finished cleaning and scuff sanding your piece, which is something that I do to every project. I always use white lightning and I always scuff sand no matter what I'm doing. It's just a good personal habit to get into if you are painting furniture. The next step for me is going to be using something called Boss. If you haven't used Boss before, you need to know that this is a primer, okay? Boss stands for blocking odors, stains, and stops bleed through. Well, what the heck is bleed through, all right? Bleed through is something that happens on your furniture when it's old wood. So sometimes old wood has like a red color or an orange color, and there might be tannins in there that might leach through your actual paint color when you're finished and applying your top coat. And that really, really would suck. <laughs> so let's not have that happen, and let's apply a nice even coat of Boss in Clear. Now I know this looks kind of milky in the container. It's not milky when it dries. It's going to be nice and clear when it dries. But I like to put a clear coat of boss on the majority of my projects so that I know in my heart I'm going to be safe from bleed through. It's also going to allow my paint to kind of grip that little bit better, let it go a little bit further, that paint, and give me a nice professional job when I'm done. Okay, so for this piece, while we wait for the boss to get dry, we have to mix up a little custom color here. Dixie Belle makes a ton of beautiful colors, but the person that I'm painting this for wants a really rich green, okay? She was calling it kind of like an Ivy League green. So I have Palmetto on the floor. I also have some Antebellum. I grabbed some black caviar and a little bit of green evergreen, okay? 
So I have a bunch of cups and we're gonna just play with some paint. Let's mix some magic up right here and uh, see what happens. So I know that she wants a little bit more antebellum to the color because she wants it to be more of a, not such a green green. Does that make any sense? Probably not. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Okay, I've come up with the perfect green for her. It's very rich, it's a little darker than the palmetto, but it still has blue undertones. So this is the color that I decided on. It's actually painted right here on this little piece of door, <laughs> just for us to see what it looks like on the piece. I also wanna send her a little snapshot of what this color is, so that she can tell me whether or not she loves it. So, I use today approximately half and half of antebellum blue and palmetto. I added a little bit of evergreen and a little bit of black caviar. Making a custom color for a piece of furniture that you're painting, it's just gonna make it stand out that little bit more because it's gonna be your exact color that you made up that nobody else has. I don't know, we'll give it a go and see what she says. Using a damp brush and my spray misting bottle, I applied the new green to the base of the cabinet. I covered all legs at the base and came up around the edges of the doors. Next up is burlap. Burlap is a beautiful, creamy, rich color. I used a separate brush from the green and applied it to the base of the cabinet. I don't blend my colors together on the first coat. I'm only laying down the initial pattern. The third and final color for this piece is sandbar. Sandbar was chosen to match the marble that I'm going to be putting back in on the top inlay. I still keep a separate brush for each color used when I blend together my paint. I make sure that I apply the second coat down onto the project, then use the separate brushes to pull the colors together. I also use my Best Dang brush. This is a natural and synthetic brush that is great for blending. I continued the sandbar pattern around the top piece where the marble will be inset onto the buffet. Let's add some bling to this project. I'm going to be adding gold leaf to this project on the front of two drawers. You're going to need a separate brush and satin clear coat. Stencil used today is a Mylar stencil from Dixie Bell. It's called Morocco. Using your masking tape or your painter's tape, tape up the stencil where you would like to apply the gold leaf.
I'm looking for a beautiful faded design so the stencil will not be flush to the piece. Using a small roller and my satin clear coat, I applied the satin clear coat to the entire area, making sure to get in close to the edges. Take your gold leaf and apply it to the area, press flat to make sure you've covered all the spots where you've put down your satin clear coat. After waiting for your clear coat to dry, take your pieces outside so you do not get gold leaf all over your house. I then used a natural bristle brush to remove any of the excess gold leaf. You have to push fairly hard to see the pattern come alive. I use the grey sanding sponge to remove a little bit of the paint around the edges and provide me with a distressed look on the buffet. Using my French tip brush and my best stain wax in brown, I applied the wax to the interior edges of the entire buffet. I like to put the wax down and then wipe it back with a baby wipe. Since this wax is water-based, it's easily wiped back to show a distressed look. Let's add just a touch more bling. None of my pieces would be complete without some gold gilding wax. It's one of my favorite tools from the Dixie Belle line. You can apply it with a brush or your finger to highlight edges. This is a brand new silkscreen stencil called Roses. Each stencil arrives with three pieces inside the package along with a tool to apply your paint. These stencils have a white backing sheet along with an adhesive side to the back of the stencil. Remove your white backing sheet and decide on placement. Once you've decided where you're going to place down your silkscreen stencil, adhere it to the piece. I find that I like to cut up my silk screen stencils so that I can get them down exactly where I want them to be. After you place down your silk screen stencil, I like to give it a slight rub to make sure that it's stuck to the surface. 
Today, I'll be using Moonshine Metallics in Gold Digger to provide a really cute little peek inside the drawers. You can use the applicator tool that is provided with the kit or a small foam applicating pad. I like to use an applicator pad so that I can push the paint through the mesh screen onto the piece. Continue along with this process until you've covered the entire silkscreen stencil. You can then gently remove your silkscreen stencil. Dixie Belle's silkscreen stencils are reusable up to 10 times. You must wash them immediately after use. This prevents the paint from clogging the mesh stencil. I like to use my scrubby soap and warm water. I remove all the paint from the mesh stencil and then lay flat to dry. Once the stencil is dry, you will see that the backside is still sticky. I put it back on to the white backing paper for future use. On the interior part of these drawers, there were some areas that had some small scuffs and scrapes. I put on a pair of gloves and used my walnut gel stain applied with an applicator pad to those areas. Once it's applied to those areas, they deepen and darken and the scratches disappear. I used my best dang brush and my best dang wax and clear and protected my entire surface of the buffet. I kept the original hardware for this piece, cleaned it and put it back in on top of the buffet. I also added the marble slabs on the top. I hope you enjoyed this beautiful buffet makeover. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for new videos.